Hi everyone, we know the macro objective for inflation is low and stable inflation, specifically to hit an inflation target, which in the UK, for example, is 2%. So, if inflation is beyond that target rate, what policies could be used to bring that rate down? Well, it depends very much on the type of inflation that's prevalent in the economy. Let's start by looking at demand pull inflation and saying that demand pull inflation is pushing the inflation rate beyond the target rate. What policies could be used to bring down demand pull inflation? Well, we could use contractionary demand side policies, contractionary monetary policy via an increase in interest rates or contractionary fiscal policy via a cut in government spending or increases in taxation but immediately guys we can already evaluate by saying contractionary fiscal policy to target inflation very unlikely because we know that it's the central bank's job in the economy to target inflation to use monetary policy to bring inflation towards target it's not the job of the government but also we can say that monetary policy is more suited to targeting inflation because the monetary policy transmission mechanism has got a variety of avenues for interest rate changes to feed through into the economy so more likely to have an impact therefore in uh, affecting AD and getting inflation towards the target rate but also central banks are independent from the government and therefore they're more transparent maybe more trustworthy more successful in getting to that inflation target so we can kind of push contractionary fiscal policy to the side and focus more on contractionary monetary policy via an increase in interest rates in order to bring demand pull inflation down and we can see on a diagram, if successful, aggregate demand will shift to the left. And as that happens, we see a reduction in demand pull inflationary pressure. We might want to call this disinflationary pressure. But now let's evaluate. Easy evaluation to start with is the conflict of macro objectives that we are likely to see. Trade-offs with macro objectives. Yes, we can see that demand pull inflation could well come down, but at what cost? We can see lower economic growth and higher unemployment. This could well be a recession in the economy. And that's not desirable at all, right? Remember, macroeconomics is all about achieving all the core macro objectives at the same time. We lose that here if we use contractionary monetary policy. We can also worry about the impact on investment. High interest rates detract investment, increase the cost of borrowing for firms, might put them off investing, and that's bad news for short-run growth, but also for long-run growth. Absolutely, long-run growth rates will be lower, but also we have issues like lower productivity, maybe worsening of the competitiveness of the economy. We don't want those kind of negative side effects when we detract investment. We can worry about the impact on the indebted, whether that's households who have got a lot of debts, whether it's businesses who are carrying a lot of debt. If interest rates go up, what's the impact on those households? What's the impact on those businesses? If households default on their loans, they go bankrupt, they become homeless potentially, their living standards suffer, they might have assets taken away from them. We can be slightly worried about that micro impact. And for businesses, if they default on their loans, they could go bankrupt, creating unemployment. So there are issues with the indebted and the impact of higher interest rates on them. But also we know that higher interest rates could well strengthen the exchange rate and as that exchange rate is strengthened that could widen a current account deficit we know that higher interest rates could mean hot money inflows into a country a hot money is savings that chase the best interest rate so if interest rates are now relatively higher let's say in the UK economy then savers are going to move their money to the UK increasing the demand for the pound that's hot money inflows strengthening the pound and with that there could well be a widening of the trade deficit we know how that works um, and that's not good if you're a trading economy. So if that happened to a country like China or Japan, that would not be good news. Potential conflict of objectives there as well. But now let's say, guys, that the type of inflation prevalent is not demand pull. Maybe it's cost push inflation that's pushing the inflation rate beyond target. What could be done then? Well, we need policies here that are very much targeting the cause. Remember all the reasons why SRS could shift to the left, higher cost of production that could lead to this inflation. So maybe it's higher wages. Wages are rising very, very, very fast, and that's leading to high inflation rates, higher than target. What we could do is to implement, if there isn't one already, or reduce, if there is one already, an inflation target. Now, that's a very good idea because that will reduce the amount that wages rise in the economy. Workers out there will think that yearly uh, inflation is going to be around the inflation target and therefore their wage bargaining will be at that rate. And therefore you can limit the extent to which wages rise on a yearly basis and bring the inflation rate uh, down yearly as a result of that. That's a very smart idea if wages are the dominant reason why we're getting higher than target rates of inflation. What if it's high rates of VAT? Well, simply you could cut VAT. Or we could go the other way and subsidize firms to reduce their cost of production and bring inflation down. But if we talk about subsidies, uh, even if we talk about VAT, there is one obvious issue here, and that is a significant cost 
to the government and the worsening of government finances. There is no way ever that governments are just going to offer subsidies to all firms in the economy to reduce costs. So this is a ludicrous idea. Maybe a reduction is in VAT more logical, but to see that in order to control inflation, that will be kind of weird and, and strange. We don't normally see that in economy. So in theory, yeah, in reality, probably not. What if it's a weak exchange rate that's driving up the price of imported raw materials and leading to higher cost push inflation? Well, in theory, central banks can intervene in foreign exchange markets, currency markets, in order to strengthen the exchange rate. Um, why would they do that? Well, a stronger exchange rate makes imports cheaper. And if imports are cheaper, that can reduce the price of imported raw materials and reduce cost of production for firms who import raw materials. Okay, fine. Again, in theory, we kind of get the idea. In reality, ludicrous, because many countries out there in the world have got freely floating exchange rates. So to talk about intervening in foreign, foreign exchange markets is not uh, what would happen in reality. So we can, again, kind of dismiss that idea as well. And really, there is deeper evaluation when it comes to cost push inflation. There are a couple of things we can think about. And first of all, we need to really think about the cause of cost push inflation. A lot of the causes are often short term bouts of inflation. So, for example, if there are high raw material prices. Often that will be a short term cause. Raw material prices don't stay high forever. If it's weak exchange rates driving up import prices of raw materials, that's not going to stay forever. You know, exchange rates strengthen on their own and that can get rid of that cost push inflation. So one, they're often short term bouts of inflation. We don't need to worry about them as much. But second, sometimes we can't do anything about them. And therefore, maybe we shouldn't worry about them and try and implement policies which have horrible side effects. So, for example, again, um, you can't do anything if raw material prices are high. Absolutely nothing you can do is just one simple example. So bear all that in mind, maybe cost push inflation. We don't need to worry as much because it's short term. And also there aren't great policies that can be used to try and bring it down. So maybe this one, we just have to wait it out and let it come back down naturally. That's good evaluation to bear in mind as well. But what if there are high long term inflation rates, long term inflation rates because the economy doesn't have enough spare capacity, very low levels of spare capacity, which means we consistently get high long term rates of inflation. Well, if that's happening, we need supply side policies to produce to increase the productive capacity of the economy, to increase long run rates of economic growth, and therefore to try and reduce the amount of pressure that's on factors of production consistently, and thus reduce those long term rates of inflation. So supply side policies, and we know what they are. They could be interventionist supply side policies. They could be market based supply side policies. We've covered these in lots of detail in prior videos. So we know what they are. We chain them up to an increase in long run aggregate supply. And with that, we see the increase in potential growth. And with that, we see reductions in our inflation rates over time. That's what we need if the economy has consistent higher than target rates of inflation because of a lack of spare capacity. So any increases in AD keep resulting in higher than target rates of inflation. But our standard evaluation points to supply side policies, no guarantee of success in boosting LRAS with a lot of the policies. We can question how expensive some of these policies are, especially the interventionist supply side policies and also the length of time before these policies would work in shifting LRAS. And therefore, if there is a need to, you know, to get that inflation rate down quickly, we're not necessarily going to see it. Remember also the negative stakeholder impact we can see if market based supply side policies are used. So if we're looking at the end, our key evaluation points in what policies we need in order to bring down inflation, we have to consider the type of inflation. That's so important. Depending on the type we're seeing, we need policies that can target that type of inflation and bringing that type of inflation down. But bear in mind that in reality, it's very hard sometimes to dissect and know exactly what type of inflation is dominating and pushing the inflation rate beyond target. So therefore, maybe a range of these policies are more important to use to just control inflation overall. Also bear in mind that there isn't much necessarily can do about cost push inflation as well. But we also have to bear in mind the rate of inflation. Remember that the objective is low and stable inflation in the UK at 2%. So if the inflation rate is around there, well, then that's good. We don't need policies to reduce inflation. And we know that if inflation gets very low and maybe into deflation territory, there are major issues that come with that. So if inflation is already low and stable. We don't need to do anything. The rate is important to consider as well. That's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you all in the next one.